Earth Mystery News is here with Richard Dolan at Alien Cosmic Expo 2018. Okay, we get Zorro your, rolling. We get <coughs> Thanks for uh, stepping out of there. I know it's, uh, Happy to. <laughs> I'm sure you're not. <laughs> no, no, it, it's fine. It's fine. I'll, I'll tell you why later. Okay. <laughs> um, so, okay, so thanks for doing this. Uh, I guess we're going to start with, um, with all of the movement and the dis and disclosure lately. What do you think of the motivation behind that is? Right. Um, yeah, the, I mean, the entire field of UFOs really exploded. Uh, over the last uh, six, seven, eight months now, since uh, December of 2017. New York Times puts out not one, but two articles. Uh, really talking about the reality of UFOs, people have to realize how radical that is. New York Times has done nothing other than debunk UFOs for about 70 years. New York Times, Washington Post, even worse, if you can imagine. And, and suddenly, they do what appears to be a 180, and putting out articles that talk about the, the validity or the potential validity of the UFO phenomenon. Um, and so the question really has to arise, why? What, what is actually going on here? What is it with the New York Times and what is it with the organization, the TTS, uh, To The Stars Academy, uh, led by Tom DeLong, uh, in conjunction with members of the intelligence community to put out what uh, they have argued is genuine UFO data to the public. And, um, and look, it has to be said that uh, a lot of this information does appear to be at totally genuine. Uh, I think most prominently we're talking about the now famous Tic Tac UFO incident, which they uh, were not the first people to put out there. This has to be noted. I mean, the Tic Tac UFO incident was actually um, commented on as early as 2007. Uh, three years after it happened. But it's really true that To The Stars Academy and Luis Elizondo and then the New York Times piece were the ones who really put that incident into the public uh, consciousness. And that seems to me to be a totally genuine UFO incident. Not just genuine, but important and powerful. The implications of that UFO encounter alone are enough that they should start a national conversation about UFOs. Because that object back in 2004, not that long ago, not only totally outperformed our best fighter jet, or, uh, excuse me, not only outperformed our best fighter jet interceptors, we're talking um, about the F-18A Super Hornets. These are incredible fighter jets. But it, it actually anticipated their rendezvous point, uh, implying that this object was able to defeat the top U.S. encryption channels at the time that the U.S. Navy was using. And any craft that could defeat Navy, uh, U.S. Navy encryption, that's of really of supreme importance. So, to the Stars Academy, in conjunction with the New York Times and uh, that, that whole team, put this story out there. Uh, Navy Commander David Fravor, who was uh, the, the key pilot in the incident, has talked very openly about this. Uh, seems to me, and, and very, very, uh, in a very upfront manner. So there are motivations here that, uh, to me, seem to be genuine. All right. Now, having said that, there's always uh, other types of motivations that are involved here. So the real question to ask is, why the New York Times, when they've debunked, 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 suddenly, boom, they put this out there. So there's one explanation. Let's call it the conventional explanation which just says, well, some good reporters saw a good story and they decided to put it out there to the public, getting you know, sufficient attribution out there and so on. Well, I, I'm not buying that explanation, not for one instant. So what I believe is the case is that this story was essentially handed to the New York Times. There was an agenda here. It doesn't have to be an evil agenda. It could be, um, there's a mix. There's always people within the intelligence community who have believed in the end of UFO secrecy. And I know this because I've spoken to them myself. Uh, and then there are people who are interested in maintaining that secrecy. There's never a monolithic uh, entity we call the intelligence community. That does not exist. So you've got a variety of uh, actors at work here. But I do believe that the intelligence community is always going to be interested in controlling the spin and the narrative 
of the UFO phenomenon. So one of the things that we have to assume that they will be interested in doing is portraying themselves as the good guys in this cover-up. So I, th I think that's a very big part of it, portraying this as a very key, important national security uh, matter, important for them to protect the public, and this is undoubtedly why they've been keeping secrecy all this long, and I think that's a big part of their narrative. Uh, my feeling is why the New York Times decided to take this story is, is very simple. Uh, this Tic Tac incident was going to come out one way or another. Um, Elizondo was talking about it uh, to the Stars Academy, was on the move, and I believe the New York Times establishment decided we are going to take this story after all, and they and not anyone else would control the narrative of this. And one of the things that they did is they put out this um, story that the, the Pentagon's program to study UFOs ended back in 2012. And I, I don't think that this is true whatsoever. And other people who have looked into it don't believe it. So, uh, and then the New York Times piece also put in several gratuitous, meaningless uh, statements by UFO debunkers. You know, why? They added nothing, nothing at all to the story. So kind of a psychological placeholder for debunking. Um, so that's what I think was going on with that. So I think, yes, obviously it's a very important question to ask why the New York Times. But the other question I would ask is why now? If they don't re release information without some sort of pressure, um, why now? Well, you know, one theory, the, the, the To The Stars people, that is Tom DeLonge, had been working with Hillary Clinton's uh, team, we could say John Podesta, all right, back in 2015, 2016, with the assumption, which I think everyone probably in the political field had, that Hillary Clinton was going to win that election. Uh, and the fact that, that Trump won the election shocked everyone, or pretty much everyone. So, uh, you know, my conversations with, for example, Peter Lavenda, who I think is pretty well plugged into that whole situation. And uh, even Steve Bassett, who isn't as plugged in, but I think has been following it very carefully. Both of them believe, and I'm not really going to disagree yet, both of them believe that um, the DeLong initiative was going to be working with, with uh, Podesta and Hillary Clinton for some type of disclosure. I'm personally very skeptical that that would have ever happened. I, I don't believe in the um, I don't believe in the integrity of that campaign to promote UFO disclosure. I don't care how many times people tell me they both were believers in UFOs. I don't believe that they would do an actual disclosure. I mean, I can go on and tell you why if you really want to know, but I just don't think that ever, would ever have happened. Be that as it may, they did not win the election. And uh, but you've got this, this train having left the station, DeLong's initiative. And... Um, it seems to me that this, a lot of this was Tom DeLonge's energy. You know, people say that he's been uh, manipulated, he's been uh, managed by the intelligence community. Look, I'm sure it goes both ways, all right? So I met Tom DeLonge a few years ago, and I'll just say he seemed very sincere in his desire to learn about UFOs. He was very interested in the topic, and um, it seemed to me that he was genuine in his desire to uh, do something good for the UFO community. That was my impression. So I, I think his intentions have been good. Now, uh, is it the case that he's been surrounded by people who have their own agenda? Well, yeah, of course, that's very likely. Does it mean that's against his agenda? Who knows? I'm not, I'm not in that circle. I don't really know the entire backstory of what I hear so many people speculating with their opinion, their analysis of what they know is happening. DeLong's being used, or as Lavenda says, it's all DeLong's initiative. And the fact is, I, I don't know. I just don't know yet. Maybe, maybe I'll have a better opinion in the future. But what I'm not going to do is, uh, is jump in with some half-baked opinion pretending that it's fully baked. <laughs> I'm, not just, I'm just not going to do it. That's super refreshing, actually, yeah, because it takes a lot of shade. And uh, he's just trying his best, I think. Um. Yeah, I, I, think, I think he's 
He's doing, and, and you know, they made so many mistakes. They, so the, the whole Mylar balloon episode. So people will say, well, this was intentional disinformation to discredit the movement. Um, I actually don't think so. I think that they tr just royally screwed up. I think it was a, a major gaffe, unprofessional, unfortunately. Uh, and the reason I say that is because these guys are in intelligence community professionals, yeah, but that doesn't really mean that they're, uh, they're experts in putting together public presentations or that they're really even experts in doing research, honestly. Some should have known better. Elizondo, you would think, should have known better, but then it turns out that Elizondo had only just been brought into the program, so I presume that he wasn't really involved in setting up the, um, you know, the whole uh, display in October of 2017. So, so, do you think the, that your president is aware of what's happening? Yeah, this is always a question. A number of years ago, I, I asked uh, one senior guy who had been with CIA for a long time, I said, how much do presidents know? about UFOs. Everyone wants to know this question. And his answer at the time, and this is uh, about a decade ago, he said, well, some have known more than others. That was his uh, assessment. And he says, look, presidents come and go. Some have the confidence of the intelligence community, some do not. Uh, some, he said, some drink. He actually said this to me. Uh, and some are reliable. Now, the real question is, uh, if a president demands to know Will they, will they know? And I, I would suspect the answer is, is, should be yes, but I don't know that it's yes. We have stories about Bill Clinton 25 years ago wanting to get to the bottom of the UFO mystery and, and at least we're told he was denied access. Uh, I mean, one, we've heard this story over and over and over again. Um, I, I mean, I think the reality is the president there are people who disagree with me here, so. But I think the president is not necessarily always going to be read in, or if if he'll be read in, or if she will be read in, um, it'll be as much as is necessary. Presidents have to be protected from all sorts of illegalities. All you have to do is look at the history of U.S. covert ops over the last human lifetime, right? So not every president knows every single detail of what the black budget world is doing. They can't. I mean, for reasons of plausible deniability, if nothing else. A lot of this stuff is deeply illegal, aside from being unethical and just evil. And so you've got to protect the president from direct uh, getting his fingerprints on some of these things. The UFO uh, cover-up, I, I think, is one of these things. So I think that um, you know a smart president will know this is not something that I can do anything about right now, and we'll just let we'll just let those people handle it. So as far as with Trump, you know, I've often wondered about Trump. He's a real wild card. Um, you know, he wasn't part of the political... I mean, he wasn't a, a politician. He knew all the politicians, but he wasn't one of them. He was a private citizen. And what private citizen these days doesn't have an interest in UFOs? Honestly, everyone does. I would imagine that Trump would be interested. The real question is, would he have the desire and motivation to do something about it? And, you know, people talk about his ego. In this case, the ego could be the the saving grace that would allow him to say, the hell with it, we're gonna go, and I wanna know. But the fact is, so far it's been but two years, and all I see is that he's been surrounded by the same uh, neocon war, war hawks that would have surrounded Hillary Clinton, that surrounded Obama, that surrounded Bush. No difference, it's the same old, same old. So I don't really see him as, uh, as directing anything new at this point. Could be wrong. We'll have to see. What do you think we're paying for this uh, to keep the secrecy in place? You know, this the UFO secret's expensive. People, I think, have to realize that uh, they'll say, "Well, what does it matter to me? Why should I care? It doesn't affect my life. It does affect your life." This this isn't just a matter of keeping the truth of other beings from us. Are you kidding me? If that were the only element of it, that'd be the easiest thing in the world to deal with. This is expensive. All right, the, the secrecy involves retaining knowledge, not simply of other beings, but of their technology. It involves the secrecy of uh, the research and development and the security that is very expensive to manage this entire project. And then you have to ask yourself, where is the infrastructure? Well, I think a certain portion of it 
are in classified facilities that are probably under below the below the ground. Uh, there's been a great deal of research to talk about this, and I think that we've got a substantial underground network that is in place, and I think some of that is related to this phenomenon. Is is there the um, possibility of an off-world clandestine space program? Well, the answer is absolutely yes. Of course there is. All right, and I, I mean that's actually a given. Uh, we have the, the NRO, the National Reconnaissance Office. That is almost by definition a secret space program all by itself. They've been running since 1960, 61. And they monitor all of the clandestine operations out there. They're quite powerful and they're quite expensive. But then the real question is how far does the technology go into a secret space program? And this is a matter of all kinds of speculation, including my own. But I think that there is some radical technology out there that's expensive. And, and this is related to the UFO subject, because those objects aren't simply being found in Earth's atmosphere and on the ground. They're out in space. They're in orbit. And we've got a number of very, very good, well-documented accounts of objects that have come in from deep space to Earth orbit, monitored by our satellites. All right. The type of satellites, incidentally, that monitored, at least some of them are known as the DSP, Defense Satellite Program satellites. Uh, I've written about them in one of my books and other people have written about them. My point is this. There, is, there are UFOs that are out there. There is, without question, a secret space program, if for no other reason than to deal with that phenomenon in a secret manner. And that's expensive. How much does it cost? Well, look, the estimate cost for one space station, one conventional estimate of one space station that runs as high as $100 billion. Now, I'm not saying we have a secret space station out there. I think it would probably be detected. Um, but it gives you an idea of the kinds of expenses. If you're going to go out into space, if you're going to have a clandestine base, many people have discussed this. I have, I have heard stories from responsible intelligence officials for years about the likelihood of bases off this planet. And, you know, you get stories like this and you just throw up your hands and you think, well, is this true or not? And I don't know if it's true. But I will tell you, they come to me all the time. All right? So let's say that there is a base on the far side of the moon. All right? Let's just put ourselves in that position. If that were true, that would be very expensive indeed. How do you man it? Well, maybe with those big black triangles that people are seeing. The BBDs, the big black deltas that have been reported for decades and decades. I spoke to a, a retired Boeing engineer who told me explicitly uh, that Boeing was building them and they didn't, and that they were using in part non-human technology. And also that at least when he was working there in the uh, late 90s, they had still not mastered that technology, but that they were working it. So that's his story to me. Is it true? Well, I think I believe him, right? So I think this is a fleet of black triangles that um, uses some kind of geomagnetic or electrogravitic principles, some sort of anti-gravity, what we would call, to get off the planet. They're enormous. So they would be ideal, ideal uh, craft, it seems to me, for doing a provisioning operation for an asteroid or a moon or what have you. So anyway, if, if you just ask yourself, Look, I know all of this is speculation, but let's just say some of this is true. It would be trillions of dollars, trillions, to have any kind of true off-world infrastructure. Where would the money come from? There's a real question. Is it going to come from federal tax dollars? Huh, I don't think so. I don't think so at all. You know, how are you going to keep that secret from the world? So now you have to have a black budget, that is, clandestine spending that is around formal, formal legal methods of getting money. So you have to break the law. You have to engage in essentially criminal enterprise. And maybe you think you're doing the right thing, but it's still against the law nonetheless. And it's expensive. Where they get it? Well, that's a question for really good accountants. Do you get it from securities fraud? Do you get it from narco trafficking? Do you get it from, who knows? There's a big hole, a black hole in the center of our global financial system. There's a lot of missing money. There's a story now. It's out, and it's a legitimate story about the disappearance or the misallocation of $21 trillion from the United States government from 1997 or 98 to 2015. So almost 20 years. 
uh, mostly from the Pentagon and one trillion from HUD, Housing and Urban Development. And that's only scratching the surface because the team that's been looking into that, there's still a lot that they haven't gone into. That number could be 50 trillion. Now, th that's mind boggling because 21 trillion would actually pay for the entire debt of the United States of America. The entire debt, not the deficit, the national debt. And th the mind just reels at that. So, A, where did the money come from? Where did it go? And this is a question for auditors and accountants, and I'm sure they will never get to the bottom of this legally. It will never happen. The United States government is, is almost, uh, by definition, unauditable. Like, God could not audit the U.S. government. Like, it would be, it's an impossibility. And I think it's designed that way. And, you know, they can tell you all they want about how we're trying to get our finances in order and we're trying to, you know, solidify our accounting system. That's BS. Because they can't do that. If they were to do that, you would see just how criminal the expenditures really have been for not just years, but generations. So that's never going to happen. They're going to talk, 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 and they'll just keep the public satisfied as long as they can. But meanwhile, money is getting siphoned out of our system. It's like an open window, and there goes your heating bill. They just crank the heat, it all goes out the window. That's our system. That money is going somewhere. It's going into an infrastructure that is off the grid. It's beyond the legal system. It's like we're living in this little fence within this fence. And there's this whole world on the other side of that fence. And we're not in it. So that's a big part of our job and is to get there. And, and what the last thing I guess I'll just say, because I know I've probably gone over my time here. Um, what's frustrating for someone like myself, I look at the world of the universities. They're the ones who should really be at the forefront of looking at these matters. And there are some brave academicians out there of very few. Most of them are so utterly timid and so utterly beaten by the system itself. All they want to do is have their own little job, their own little intellectual turf, and they will never, ever look at this. They're stuck in such a conventional reality. They have no idea. I used to live in that world. I know. And you think, oh, well, yes, you know, you spend your whole life watching TV news, then you go to the university and you think, oh, my goodness, there's this other, other reality, and they think that's the sum total. What they don't realize is that beyond the academic reality, beyond the world of books, uh, by uh, critics like Noam Chomsky, who I used to read for years, and who I, I've admired for years, so let me just say that. But that's, that's a very, very closed reality as well. And beyond that is the classified reality, all right, that academicians never go to. Why? Well, because by definition it's off limits to them. They can't, they don't read these classified documents. But that doesn't mean they don't exist. And good investigators are aware that there is deeply clandestine activity happening and just because it's not legally declassified doesn't mean it doesn't exist. The UFO subject is one of these, is probably the most important of them. Simply because, uh, you know, most of those documents remain off limits doesn't mean they're not there. And by the way, we do have enough in terms of formally declassified documentation that the academic world should have been looking at this stuff for years. They should have been looking at this 40 years ago, and they're still sitting on their hands, mostly. That's for shame, all right? So it's left to a few people who just care. Like, I care. Stanton Friedman over there, he cares. And there's other people in this room who care. And, and, and we're just out there. No, no one funds us. We're just scrabbling by, and that's fine. But like, we really, what we need in this world is serious institutional support and organization for scholars to get off their asses and actually study this phenomenon in a serious way, because that's what it deserves. It deserves serious, coordinated, brave research, not national security ass-kissing research. All right? So, 
And it's not back to your first question about to the stars and DeLong and the motivations of these people. I don't fault anyone, anyone who wants to get the UFO subject out into public discourse. Because we need that. All right. Motivations are motivations and everyone's got their own. It's the job of the people to take this information now and use it for our purposes. What are our purposes? Look, we're not here to create utopia. We're not here to pretend, oh yeah, all of the problems in the world will be resolved if we have disclosure. Seriously, fools believe that. Adults realize that human beings are always going to find a way to create more problems for themselves. So what we do. But what we can do is get at this, this little thing called truth. It really does exist. You know, there is, there is objective truth. And we don't always know what it is, but, but by learning it, we make our world a better place. And we make ourselves better because we take ourselves out of illusion and out of lies. The lies about our society, and that includes lies about ourselves. So it's really not so that we can learn the truth about extraterrestrials. Sure, that's important. The real importance, though, is that we make our governments responsive to us. That's what it's about. Extraterrestrials, anyone who studies it knows enough that it's real. And they don't need confirmation from the government. All of that's true. But we do need the government to respond to us. Otherwise, just roll over and uh, live the rest of your life in a kind of global totalitarian nightmare. Fine, be my guest. But that's not my goal. So those governments have to respond to us. And they're not allowed to lie to us about this most important of subjects. Wow. <laughs> that did it. I had no... I didn't... I didn't know where we were going to go with any of that, so. Okay, good. All right, good. All right, great.